After months of build-up, Modern Warfare 3 is finally here, and it promises a lot. A campaign with open-world missions and the return of one of the most iconic villains of the series, a multiplayer with all the maps from the original Modern Warfare 2, and a return to form and core gameplay design, the return of game modes such as War, and an open-world zombies experience touted being bigger than Outbreak. And you know, naturally, like most Call of Duty games, discussion around this game is all over the place. $70 DLC this, $70 DLC that. I've already talked about all of that in the past. If you want to know my thoughts on that in depth, check out my first impressions video when the game was first revealed. That being said, the discourse surrounding this game in particular has felt different from past years. Like, this doesn't feel like a year where people know they're in for a black sheep like Ghosts or Vanguard, or a year where everyone can come and despise what was honestly a really overhated game like Infinite Warfare. The general sentiment I've kind of seen around a lot of audiences this time around just seems to be, well, exhaustion. Overall reception for the game hasn't been kind, like, it's really saying something when even critics are giving this game the lowest scores they've ever given a Call of Duty game. Personally, I think it's a bit wild to only now do this after we've gotten games like Ghosts and Vanguard, but still, this is the first time we've seen this happen for a Call of Duty game. And I think it has more to do with something everyone has been saying for a long while now. Call of Duty desperately needs a break. And like, this sentiment isn't new. People have been saying this for years upon years now. With how much all of Activision's studios have been working on these games, especially now that all hands are on deck to work on them, it really seems like things are finally starting to give. This model just isn't sustainable anymore. For short-term profit, yeah, and I don't think Activision is going to want to slow down on that anytime soon, but we live in a time period where even AAA franchises like Pokemon or Assassin's Creed are taking at least a year or two in between brand new releases. Whether or not that really worked out for those franchises, that's probably another topic for another time, especially in Pokemon's case. But this has really been long overdue for Call of Duty in particular. And it's probably most obvious with the article we saw Jason Schreier release in regards to Modern Warfare 3's development, which I'll leave a link in the description below for. It's the same unfortunate story we see all the times on games with crunch and tight deadlines. Sledgehammer had 16 months to develop the game, were forced to work long hours to finish it, didn't even know if they were developing DLC or a new game for a while and had to deal with almost no communication from Activision or even Infinity Ward for that matter, with the few times they did so that they could impose choices that would have made their game worse. And if you read through this article, all of this considered, it's honestly a miracle the game is even finished in the first place. So you might be wondering, given all of this and like what I've previously talked about for the game, what do I personally think of it now? Well, based on the title of the video, probably not what you expected. It's fantastic. It's honestly the best Call of Duty game I've played in years. Well, mostly. Okay, let's get campaign out of the way first because the initial buzz this campaign got definitely didn't help matters. And let me remind you at first, this was the main reason I was getting the game. Now, for reasons you'll find out in a future video that I'm working on, I'm mostly going to save the deep dive analysis of this game for a later date. This is just going to be my overall first impressions of the game across the board. I'll save a full-fledged, in-depth review for another time. I don't know if I would call this the worst campaign in the series, but uh... Yeah, it's definitely up there. And it's not even because it's particularly awful, it's just, well, boring. The standard missions in the game are nothing you haven't already seen in a Call of Duty campaign. There's nothing stand out about any of them. No cool set pieces, no level gimmicks, nothing. The closest the game gets to that is the open combat missions, and on paper, these are really cool. They're levels that drop you into this open playground of sorts and let you approach them however you want. You can find weapons, equipment, kill streaks, whatever, in order to get the level done. You can go in guns blazing, or you can do the entire thing stealth. In execution, though, these are really half-baked. First of all, the objectives on each level are incredibly simplistic. Most of them are just doing the same task, like, four times. Destroy three helicopters. Defuse four bombs. Collect four smartphones. It's all homogenous. On top of that, the levels themselves are not that big, so you're a lot more limited as to what you can actually do in them. Sure, I could try to go stealth on every single one of them, but the only thing that changes every time in my approach in subsequent playthroughs is just which direction I go. There really isn't any variation. Combine that with the levels themselves being pretty short and inconsequential, there's no real reason to go back and replay them unless you really want that achievement for unlocking all the weapons and equipment for them. If they wanted to tackle non-linear levels like this, I think Black Ops 2 is still the gold standard for this. The levels they have there are still mostly linear, but they have a much better sense of progression since there's much more spectacle actually going on in them. These feel like mini Spec Ops levels. 
The story isn't really much to write home about either. Everything here is happening on autopilot. There's no narrative draw like the first game had, and there's no stellar characterization the second game had. Things just sort of happen in Modern Warfare 3's campaign. Pile that with a really disappointing return of Makarov, an ending that just suddenly comes and goes, and the shortest runtime for a campaign yet, you have a definite contender for one of the worst single-player campaigns in the series. I'd want to say I'm more interested in the next game that inevitably happens, but that would require me and everyone else to trust Infinity War with making a good Call of Duty multiplayer again, and I don't think that's happening anytime soon after Modern Warfare 2. This is definitely the area where you can tell most development took a hit. The campaign doesn't really have any passion this time around. It's short, it's homogenous, and it's boring. The real package here is multiplayer and zombies, and if you didn't watch my impressions from the reveal, I know this is still going to be a hot take, but I think given the hand we were dealt, I think a brand new game was the best case scenario we could have gotten here. Yes, it's obviously repurposed DLC for Modern Warfare 2, but let me bring this up again. Infinity Ward spent the past year doing nothing to make their game better. They weren't fixing bugs until several months later. There's bugs in it like the UAV bug that are still a problem. They weren't communicating with anyone in the fandom. Other developers had to get on them to fix bugs that still weren't fixed. They were still core design problems with the game like the perk system, the squad spawning, the lack of classic minimap. Be totally honest with yourself, as a Call of Duty fan, what would you have rather played? Another year of that with DLC that likely still would have cost 70 bucks because this is Activision we're talking about, or have a new game led by a developer that has a history of actually listening to feedback, making the game better, and getting on top of bugs as soon as possible. And along with that has Almost all the content from the last game carry over, has all the staples of what people actually love about Call of Duty, and fixes every problem the last game had along with every problem the game's beta had, making the game before it borderline obsolete. Yeah, when you put it like that, the answer's kind of obvious. And look, I know people got burned from Modern Warfare 2, I did as well, and if you put time into it, you're probably feeling really burned knowing all of this is now in a game that is, objectively speaking, better in every way. Maybe it was going to be $70 DLC, that much is obvious, but I'm not going to judge a game for what it was supposed to be, I'm going to judge it for what it actually is. And as far as multiplayer goes, I'm going to be totally honest, this is the best Call of Duty multiplayer I've played in a really, really long time. I almost didn't want to put out this video because I just want to keep playing it. That isn't to say it's without its issues. The core problems with the modern games are still there, like the strict skill-based matchmaking and disbanding lobbies. The new armory system they introduced is incredibly flawed. I like that they tried something new for unlocking all of these items, but the way it's structured by having to complete daily challenges, along with having to deal with the game's strict skill-based matchmaking, which, side note, honestly feels like the worst it's ever been. Like, I've never had to sweat this much at a Call of Duty game before. Unlocking stuff can be more of a chore than it is necessary. I shouldn't have to be watching YouTubers explain this system so that I know how to unlock a fucking Semtex grenade. But yeah, outside of that, it's a core, classic multiplayer experience. And yeah, it isn't reinventing the wheel too much, but after the past few years, it doesn't need to. Modern Warfare 2019 and Modern Warfare 2 changed things too much, Cold War was held back by a dated engine, and Vanguard had an identity crisis on what exactly it wanted to deliver in content. After so many years, it's nice to finally have a real, traditional Call of Duty multiplayer experience with variety, with trade-offs, and with maps we know that are mostly fantastic. The last time that really felt like the case was probably Modern Warfare Remastered or even World War II. Is it ridiculous to be praising all this stuff coming back? Absolutely. But it's here, and it's fun. I never got to play the original Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer, and having played this as much as I have, I'm starting to see the hype behind even more maps than just High Rise or Favela. I am loving the maps in this game. I already really loved ones from previous games like Rust or Terminal, but playing a lot of these for the first time has been an unbelievable amount of fun. I love the freedom Quarry gives you, I love the flow and aesthetics of Rundown. Hell, I even really like Wasteland a lot more than I expected, which I'm sure is a hot take. Camo grinding is even better than it was last year too. It's the same structure as Modern Warfare 2, but this time challenges actually make sense. You're not doing launch shots for every single gun in the game. I've already gotten so many gold camos from just from playing the game naturally. That's how it should be. And if those camos somehow are enough, there's also a zombies camo grind again. And on that note, like... Wow, I've been enjoying zombies a lot more than I expected. I've also talked about this previously, but I absolutely hated DMZ in Warzone 2. It felt fine enough just to explore the map casually, not thinking about too much, 
but the PvPvE element just didn't feel very balanced. AI soldiers were crazy good and caused for a lot of frustration. And in general, it just never felt like you were extracting with anything worthwhile. Go ahead, call it a skill issue, whatever, but there's nothing in Call of Duty that has made me more frustrated than when I was forced to play this to unlock the M13B, only to get immediately gunned down over and over again by bots who I swear to god practically get hit scanned the split second they notice you. In Zombies, this isn't a problem. There's no fights against players, so you don't have to worry about a better squad pulling up or someone camping on an extraction point to kill you and steal your stuff. There's items that you can extract with that actually make the game better too. You can extract schematics to craft perks, tools to upgrade weapons, and even deploy with wonder weapons. You can extract base weapons and equipment that'll permanently become unlocked when you extract with them, which shaves a lot of time off of the armory. And then of course, the only enemies you really have to fight are zombies and boss zombies. I'm sure some of these things eventually made their way into DMZ, but because of how ridiculous the bots were in that game, and still are to this day, I just didn't bother and didn't care to find out about it. If I wanted to play a more hardcore quote unquote game mode like this with bots, Modern Warfare 2 Spec Ops balanced this perfectly fine. If I want to play something casually, Zombies has that in spades. It's even got contracts on the map just like DMZ so you can get points faster too. Like here, yeah, let's check out this one here. I guess I'll just get this one done so that I can- Why? I'm not exaggerating. This is the worst part of the whole game, even worse than the campaign. What are regular ass bots doing in a fucking zombies mode like this, and why are they just as relentless as DMZ? If I want to get fucked in the ass while playing this game, that's what the center of the map is for. Zombies already has a great difficulty curve here, letting you choose how hard or easy the experience is, but sometimes that gets interrupted by these fuckers that can melt you in a second. This didn't need to be in the game mode. Getting hoarded by zombies or attacked by bosses is more than enough. I know this isn't round based zombies and nothing is ever going to beat that, but as far as Modern Warfare doing its own thing with zombies and this being an evolution of Outbreak goes, I think it's actually a lot more fun than most people were expecting it to be. The thing is though, as much as I'm loving all this multiplayer content, not only is it not doing anything revolutionary, but so much of it is just recycled. And I think that, at its core, is why this series really, really needs a break. As much as I love the multiplayer of this game, this is still a collection of maps from Modern Warfare 2 and eventually Modern Warfare 2. A lot of weapons are pulled from 2019 again, just like in the second game, and just like the second game, are sometimes split into multiple weapons because of the weapon platform system. Ground War Invasion are a ton of fun, and they're much better than they were in the beta, but these are all from portions of the next Warzone map, which seems to be the only real new content this game has. Even War Mode, which I will emphasize, is a ton of fun, like so much fun. It's only two maps from the previous games stitched together. I like playing these maps again in this fashion, but it's still repurposed content. Content in the campaign is repurposed from Verdansk. And while it's cool seeing the map in action again to some degree, there isn't a whole lot about the campaign I still would call original. In a lot of ways, as much as I really love this game, it's almost the epitome of the whole same game every year argument we used to get for this series during its golden age. And because of that, it's very clear this series is on the verge of collapsing in on itself. Financially, it's always going to do well, but we're at a point where something just has to give. Yeah, Treyarch's next game is still on the horizon, and a lot of people, including myself, are putting a lot of stock in that one. But as we've seen with Modern Warfare 2, a smooth dev cycle doesn't always mean a lot. Now, I think Treyarch is going to deliver a much better product at launch next year, especially if they've been working on this ever since finishing Cold War. But after that... I don't think it would hurt to let the series take an extra year or something. I would have gladly waited another three years for Modern Warfare 3 if it meant getting a real hefty campaign depicting Makarov's return. Hell, when I still had rose-tinted glasses about Modern Warfare 2019, I was going back to that game's multiplayer all the time. I have more playtime on it the year that Cold War was out. Microsoft now owns Activision and Blizzard. If there was ever an opportunity for Call of Duty to just take its time, it's now. Let Treyarch release their next game next year, and then take some time to maybe figure out where to go from there. Decide if this dev cycle for the games is still really worth it. Decide if maybe, I don't know, making new games that play to each developer's strengths is the best course of action. Hell, that probably would be the best case scenario here. Imagine getting a Call of Duty with a cinematic campaign like Modern Warfare 2019 and a spec ops in a raid mode like Modern Warfare 2 had led by Infinity Ward. We get a multiplayer experience that's led by Treyarch and Sledgehammer, a zombies mode led by Treyarch, and in the meanwhile, Raven and the rest of the teams are supporting Warzone. Every developer has their clear strengths and weaknesses, let them play to only their strengths. Call of Duty 
is one of the biggest game franchises in the world, and most people who talk about it now are usually talking about Warzone. The main series can wait, the devs can wait, and the fans can wait. Anyways, that's where I'll leave it for now. Like I've said multiple times, I'm not gonna blame people for not getting the game and feeling totally burned out, but take it from someone who's been playing Call of Duty for the past 13 years. If you really miss that classic Call of Duty action, I think the game is still worth checking out. Maybe wait for a sale or something or buy the game used somewhere. The campaign may leave a lot to be desired, but Zombies is much better than you're probably expecting, and multiplayer is the closest we're ever gonna get to a remastered Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer. If you like what you watched, be sure to subscribe to the channel. I make review content like this talking about games, music, and now that the strikes are over, I can get back to talking about movies and TV shows again. And on that note, I'll see you guys in the next video.